Hello everyone! In this video we will continue to examine topic 5.4, the magnetic effects of electric currents, and in particular we will investigate some interesting magnetic fields. Alright, so uh, you don't need to be able to draw sort of infinitely many uh, magnetic fields or magnetic field structures. Um, but you should be familiar with a couple of different representations and consequences. Uh, I'm going to assume as your base for the moment that you understand sort of this is the basic structure of the magnetic field for a uh, bar magnet. Um, and I want to talk about a couple of things that you could do with those bar magnets and what that might result in for the field. So imagine you zoomed really far out on your magnetic field, uh, sorry, on your bar magnet. What does the structure of the field look like from far away? Well, the first thing to note is that it is, in fact, much weaker further out. Um, so that's an important characteristic. But something else that happens, which is that sort of these lines become sort of very evidently curlier. And they look a lot like, uh, as it turns out, our electric dipole. So these curving lines for the magnetic dipole look very similar to the curvy lines for an electric dipole. Uh, and so from far away, um, you can identify a, a magnetic dipole as having this sort of like big elephant ear structure. Um, uh, that's sort of how it appears um, from far away. Now what happens if you do the opposite? If you zoom close in up to that magnetic field? Well, uh, just as before, being close by means that necessarily that magnetic field is stronger, but it also does something to the way you would represent the field uh, in terms of magnetic field lines. Uh, as you zoom in to this sort of structure, uh, you know, it's important to note, it's not, to, it's not that the other loops don't exist, it's just now we're zoomed in here, okay? And you can see that along the side of the magnet, right, magnetic field lines are going from north to south, but they are approximately parallel. Um, they do sort of have the field strength change as you go from near the magnet to far away. So they are stronger here than they are here. Uh, but those field lines are approximately parallel to the magnet itself. Uh, and if you put a compass right here, it will line up in that direction. Um, so that's an interesting fact. Okay, so now, okay, what happens if you cut this magnet in half, or alternatively, if you take two normal bar magnets and hold them near each other, but not exactly touching? Okay, what happens? Um, well, consider the following uh, Consider the following thing. Remember that these field lines loop all the way through. So what happens when you sort of pull the middle part apart? Okay, you can think of the field lines, well, they're going to go from north to south on the outside of the magnet. And so you can see how that field line sort of propagates through the magnet and then curves back out again and then back through the other magnet. So the field lines point from north to south within this region of space. Okay. Notice that from very far away, if you zoomed out, this would look just like a magnetic dipole, as you might expect, um, because you can't see what's going on in here. But directly inside here, the magnetic field lines will point from north to south, as they do everywhere outside magnets. Uh, these two magnets uh, would be aligned and therefore attracted to each other, which we'll get to in a second. Um, Alternatively, if you had them oppositely aligned, you would see that the magnetic field has sort of a discrete um, uh, stop sort of in the middle um, as the field lines um, are pointed in opposite directions due to these magnets. If this seems a little bit uh, intuitive that like this one is going to sort of pull together and snap together and this one is going to sort of push apart or bounce off, uh, that's good. Um, so. What you can do is use a metaphor in your head, uh, so a model of how a, uh, a magnetic field lines work, uh, that might be helpful in imagining whether um, a force will be applied and in what direction that force will be applied. So we already know that in this case, these two magnets will be attracted to each other, but that can be interpreted as assuming these magnetic fields are like sort of tight, connected, uncuttable elastic bands that don't really want to touch each other. So they want to be as small as possible and sort of pull tight, but they don't want to touch each other. Uh, and if you use that sort of mental image, right, what will happen here is that these bands will tighten, they'll sort of snap together, and these loops will become as small as possible. 
Uh, whereas in this particular case, um, if those loops sort of tighten in, they're sort of going to bounce against each other. And the closer these two magnets get, you can sort of see the way that the field lines would have to scrunch together, and they don't want to touch each other. So you can use that sort of mental metaphor for thinking about how forces might arise uh, for magnetic fields, okay? Uh, how the forces might arise for magnetic fields. Note that um, uh, this is, um, yeah, uh, not, it, it's not an accurate explanation of exactly why that's happening, but it's a good metaphor in your head to have uh, for what is going on. Um, it'll guide you in the correct direction uh, most of the time.